Good evening, viewers. You're tuned in to ICRT. I, Keeping you informed. ICRT! The head of the Veterans Affairs Council is advising caution to those traveling to the mainland for the upcoming anniversary celebrations of the Huangpu Military Academy. Yan De Fa says only a small number of Taiwan's retired officers are making the trip and all as individuals rather than as an organized delegation. However, Yan says the Veterans Affairs Council is in touch with them and continues to advise them against taking part in political activities or interviews. The celebrations in Taiwan and China over the weekend will mark the 100th anniversary of Huangpu, also known as Wampoa. The famed academy founded on the mainland but later moved to Taiwan. Caution Retired Delegation Activities Interviews Famed Pingdong officials are urging pet owners to take their pets for rabies vaccinations as the number of cases are on the rise of the Hengchun Peninsula. Officials there say there have been a total of five cases of ra rabies in wild animals so far this year, involving four ferret badgers and one masked civet. The last time a civet caught rabies occurred about seven years ago. The county government issued its call for pet owners to vaccinate their dogs and cats each year, with violators facing fines ranging from 30,000 to 150,000 in tea based on the Prevention and Control of Infectious Animal Diseases Act. Vaccinations can be administered at animal hospitals or during mobile vaccination sessions across the entire country this month. Vaccination Rabies Peninsula Infectious Violator Administer Taiwan's army is updating its decades-old bayonet training to focus on practical hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, enhancing battlefield survival. Mayor General Liu Xingmo said military instructors are studying the U.S. military's hand-to-hand -hand combat program as a base for the new training. The shift aims to enable soldiers to effectively use handheld weapons and knives in close combat. The traditional bayonet training, established in 1965 and largely ceremonial, will be replaced to improve defense capabilities. Defense Chief Wellington Koo emphasized the need for practical training and announced the end of other outdated traditions such as goose-stepping and overseas travel restrictions for military personnel. Enhance Practical Combat Effective Traditional Defense A new Taipei apartment dweller has been heavily fined after it was discovered that they were keeping 81 pets. City officials say the rooftop apartment in Banqiao District was not sanitary and the strong smell led neighbors to complain. The resident was previously evicted from another apartment and fined over 200,000 NT over their pets, with authorities offering to help them put the animals up for adoption. They say the owner refused help and in fact kept acquiring more pets. This time the owner was fined totals uh, with totals of 282,500 uh, 282, NT for unclean conditions and failure to properly microchip and vaccinate the pets. The Animal Protection Office urges pet owners to be realistic about their ability to care for pets and not to keep more than they can handle. Dweller Sanitary Evicted Adoption Microchip Vaccinate
tech giant Google has announced a new initiative to train 2,000 ready-to-work cybersecurity professionals in Taiwan by the end of 2025. Google Taiwan's general manager Tina Lin highlighted the global cybersecurity talent shortage, especially in the Asia-Pacific region. The program aims to position Taiwan as a leader in global cybersecurity. Google will collaborate with the Ministry of Digital Affairs. The Institute for Information Industry and National Taiwan University of Technology providing free certification courses. The curriculum includes network security, risk management, and Python programming, totaling 180 hours. This initiative is part of Google's Intelligent Taiwan Plan, which has been enhancing Taiwan's digital landscape since 2018. Through various programs, Google has already helped over 100,000 professionals and developers improve their digital skills. Initiative: Cybersecurity, Collaboration, Certification, Curriculum, Landscape. Local food manufacturer Chimay has announced it will begin producing frozen dumplings at its newly established plant in Poland in August. According to Chimay Foods President Sun Chonglong, the plant in Lodz is a 200 million NT joint investment with Polish meat producer Superdrob. Song says when fully operational, the plant will produce 1 million dumplings a day of 25 million dumplings monthly, putting it on par with its factories here in Taiwan. The Chimay Foods president says there are also plans to expand into other items such as dim sum and steam dumplings in the future. The company has said it hopes that by working with retailers and supermarket channels selling Asian goods in Europe, it hopes to use Poland as a springboard to expand into other markets such as the UK, Germany, France, Belgium, and Denmark. Frozen joint investment operational. Dim sum retailers springboard. The Ministry of Agriculture announced today the successful development of a solar-powered smart grain dryer, which it says can address labor shortages in the agriculture sector. It says the machine can dry peanuts as well as other grains. And can replace traditional sun drying methods, which are labor intensive, time consuming, and weather dependent. The MOA developed the dryer for over two years with the Shengfeng Agricultural Machinery Corporate Cooperation, aiming to ensure precise drying quality control and reduce labor needs. The MOA said this new dryer, this new smart dryer, uses load sensors to automate and optimize drying parameters, enhancing quality and saving labor. Its solar power storage system uses less power and has lower carbon emissions. The MOA plans to include it in its subsidy programs for farmers, covering one third to one half of the cost. Solar powered labor shortages optimize parameters emissions subsidy. Singapore authorities say a dredger boat reported a sudden loss in engine and steering control before it hit a cargo tanker last week, causing the oil spill that has blackened part of the city island's southern shores. The Netherlands-flagged dredger Vox Maxima struck the Singaporean fuel supply ship Marine Honor on Friday. It ruptured one of the cargo tanks on the Marine Honor, which leaked low sulfur fuel into the sea. The leak has been contained. But tides have washed the spilled oil further along the shore, including to the popular resort island of Sentosa. Singapore authorities said the Vox Maxima's crew was assisting with ongoing investigations. Over 250 workers are involved in the cleanup, and conservationists are monitoring the full extent of damage on marine and wildlife. Dredger, tanker, oil spill. Ruptured. Conservationists. Monitoring.
Taiwanese travelers heading to the U.S. are advised to use the Esta mobile app for their travel authorization applications, enhancing privacy and security. The U.S.'s National Travel and Tourism Office reports a 25 percent increase in Taiwanese visits to the U.S. this year, with over 112,000 trips as of April. The launch of flights to Seattle by Delta, China Airlines, and Starlux has boosted flight cap- capacity by 20 percent compared to 2019, indicating a strong Taiwan-U.S. travel outlook. An official warns that many travelers inadvertently incur extra fees by clicking on third-party sites, and recommends the Esta app, available in 24 languages, including traditional Chinese, for secure and direct applications. The app provides a user guide specifically for Taiwanese travelers. Authorization, enhancing privacy, capacity. Inadvertently, secure. Taiwanese basketball star Al Bashir has joined Japan's B1 League team Akita Northern Happy Nets under a high-profile multi-year contract worth tens of millions NT annually. At a press conference in Taiwan, Akita's team officials expressed high expectations. For Al Bashir, who will wear the number zero jersey previously worn by Japanese star Yuki Togashi, the team hopes Al Bashir will boost their chances of winning the championship. Team chairman Yuki Mizuno highlighted the importance of the number zero jersey and revealed that he decided to sign Al Bashir after watching his T1 playoff performance. Al Bashir aims to help the team improve their record and secure a championship. Akita Northern Happy Nets, founded in 2010, plans to move to a new prefectural gymnasium in 2028. Japan's B1 League allows each team three foreign players and one Asian import, with two foreign players and one Asian import allowed on the court simultaneously. High profile expectations championship chairman performance simultaneously. Looking for the hottest music and exciting updates? Follow YSRT on YouTube and all social media.